This here is a two, two, 2017 Chevy Express Duramax van with the new 2.8 four-cylinder turbo diesel LWN engine. And if you work on vans, you might be interested to see what GM changed and what they didn't in order to make this engine work. So that's the collision damage that we will be working on soon. So let's start with the air cleaner housing. If you worked on gas vans before, you probably know if this probably looks very familiar. It uses the same filter as the gasoline vans, except that they deleted the wording vortex here. The mass airflow, humidity, barometric pressure sensor looks the same. GM did away with using the vacuum pump to change HVAC modes inside the vehicle, but they still use the vacuum system. They have the ball, vacuum ball, reservoir, which is connected to a hose that goes inside towards the engine. I will show it to you once we are in the interior. The air conditioner hose line looks the same as in a Duramax engine for the first part. It does the same kind of spiraling and then it goes to the air AC compressor which is mounted on the driver's side. On the Duramax it used to be here. The engine fan now does not have the variable speed control. No, no harness coming out of here. Makes it easier I guess. And now it has a back shroud, so which is solidly secured to the engine. They've been doing this on, on pickup trucks for a while, but never on vans. The power steering pump is now on the passenger side of the vehicle. Which, but they, they kept the reservoir in the same place, so... The hose and pipe from the reservoir now go behind the fan and into the pump and the two hoses come out of the pump now go through the cooler right away through the power steering cooler and one line in there one to the hydro boost now on all other vans two lines come into the cooler and it makes a loop and goes back What else? If you remember on the Duramax fans on the core support there was a power distribution block with three studs in it. Now it still has the same block but they changed the main power wire. This, this cable, I connected them temporarily so I could start the vehicle but it go to the core support. This goes to the battery which is mounted in the same spot on the frame and this goes to the first battery. Now. At the positive terminal, we have a cable branching out here, and now we have this. This is factory, mind you. Two taped up fuse holders, which go behind the engine control module. We have this two wire connector. Not sure where this goes yet. Well, that's different. The lower radiator hose remains, keeps the same large outlet here, but as it goes further towards the engine, it's a much smaller hose. This is what the engine looks from the inside. General Motors kept the diesel van, diesel engine van body. I guess it was easier for them to go this way, but this is a small engine and it doesn't require nearly as much room as the 6.6 .6 Duramax. There is very little space for the passenger feet. You can tell this is a carryover because there is this removable piece to, to do the injectors on a 6.6 .6 van. We don't need it anymore. There is plenty of room once you remove the doghouse. And the same is here. 
Now this here is the vacuum line that goes from the vacuum ball I told you about. If we follow it, here it becomes a metal line. Let me turn on the light. And here it branches out to this. Some kind of a valve here we have. Now what I was curious about is if is it possible to do a van body swap for the 2.8 diesel? Will the gasoline engine van body with a smaller duckhouse opening fit over this engine? It appears to me that yes it will if those two metal lines are cooling tubes are relocated. I guess there is absolutely no reason for them to go that out oh, that far. They can be put higher up. This is a vacuum line, easy to move out of the way. And then we have the turbocharger here. Now this this part would be difficult to move because this is a part of the turbocharger. But we have healthy, I would say two and a half inches of space, which which sounds just just enough to fit the gas body over. What else is funny here? Here we have access to our four injectors and General Motors kept the sound insulation foam. There is no engine cover like on like on the Colorado or Canyon trucks but they kept this piece. There is plenty of access for the transmission bolts but I noticed that one of the bolts for the 8L90 transmission goes here and faces the other way. So if you want to change the transmission you might have to remove this exhaust. Now the transmission. Now there seems to be plenty of space. There is plenty of space here. That's a kind of an overview. On the driver's side we have the big nice EGR cooler. I will show you the exhaust stack now. I'm sorry, the cooling stack. The cooling stack on this vehicle consists of a intercooler, radiator and AC condenser. All these parts are carry over from a 6.6 .6 Duramax, there are no changes. Same intercooler, same shape, same size, same positions of the outlets. Same power distribution block on the core support. There was a change to the fan shroud. Upper fan shroud now has this cutout. Not sure why. Not sure why yet. And the lower fan shroud now has this hole in it. Not sure why yet as well. And now we have this plastic piece that I suspect goes on top of the grill and around the hood latch. The dog house remains the same as in a 6.6 .6 diesel and so is the coolant tank. Under the van we have an updated DEF tank. This plastic protection cover was not there before they must have redesigned it and this is our auxiliary battery this is our little compared to the LGH Duramax exhaust with a bunch of sensors in it this is our 8L90 transmission position of the cooling lines. This is our engine mounts. The engine mount bracket that bolts to the frame is also different on both sides. 
these are a few lines engine oil pan clearance to the cross member a couple inches this here oh, that's a auxiliary battery cable and you can see you can see the interior of the van from here Flex portion of the exhaust. Oh, this is a new part. This little metal piece was never here before. Alright, I guess that concludes the 2.8 Duramax diesel van review.